All right, so if you guys live in New York, you know that it is not cheap, um, especially as a student, because you don't really have disposable income. But I thought it would be interesting to kind of share my little tips on how I budget and how I save money in New York. Um, these are honestly pretty generic, and I feel like this video is going to be pretty self-explanatory. But still, I thought. It will be fun to share with you guys because I do be a struggling student in New York. If you guys don't know, my name is Jody, and I am a first year at Parsons. And I recently moved to New York like a few months ago. But these are just like little tips and tricks and little habits that I've picked up since moving to New York. All right, so starting off, this isn't really a tip. But it's something that I do personally for myself, and it's to track my spendings. And I do this by having like a spreadsheet that I'm constantly updating with. And in my spreadsheet, I have different categories, and I break it down into things like art supplies or like art and school supplies, and food. And I like to keep updating it as I spend throughout the month because. It kind of helps me pace myself, so it keeps me from spending a lot in the month and having like nothing to spend at the end of the month. And it also keeps me from, you know, kind of saving everything so I can splurge at the end. This is kind of like a good way for me to really prioritize my spending and make sure that my money is going towards something that I actually need. But yeah, again, this is just personally for me. I know spreadsheets can be kind of intimidating and and. Kind of a lot of work and a headache to look at, but even if it's not a spreadsheet, I do highly recommend that you track your spendings. And it doesn't have to be something that you do every day. Like I like to do it like every day because I know that I will forget if I don't. But I would just recommend having something, some sort of like a record that you can use to keep track of all the expenses or at least like major expenses you have. Throughout the month, because it also kind of makes you more aware of where your money's going. So yeah, my next tip, and this isn't really a tip. I feel like it's just common sense, but it is to utilize student discounts. And I get a lot of my student discounts, obviously from school. Um, I would check first of all. I would check your school website and ask around like what discounts you get. Um, honestly, at Parsons. I don't get a lot of discounts. I get like 10% off at Blick for like art supplies and whatnot. And I also get a lot of free admissions into museums or like just discounted admissions into museums with a valid student ID, of course. But uh, a lot of I find a lot of discount and student like discount or offers on this website called Coupon Clippers, and I will leave their link in the description below. But this is more pertinent to New York City students, at least. But basically, it is a digital coupon book, and it is broken down into all the different neighborhoods in New York City.、Um, I don't know if they have them for like Brooklyn and Queens, but I think it might just be for Manhattan. I'm not quite sure. But they have like a it's like a digital. Coupon book, like I said, and it's broken down based on the neighborhoods in New York, and they it's mainly for food and drinks and whatnot. But they do have like student discounts, and these discounts are refreshed like every few weeks to like month, and they are constantly being interchanged. And basically, these discounts can give you like ten, fifteen percent depending on the restaurant, and If you go there, you just show them like the coupon on the website, and as long as you have a valid student ID, the discount applies. But they do also have stuff that aren't just for like food. They have it for like services, like haircuts, manicures, and like massages, like stuff like that. And it's just a really good way to help you save money if. You're going out to eat. If you're going out to, you know, do your hair or something, it's just like it gives you more options to find 
more affordable options and also it's a good way to explore and try different things because sometimes you don't really know what you want to eat but if someone is giving you a discount might as well eat there right that kind of brings me to like my next point which is trying to avoid eating out as much as possible or like refraining from buying drinks and food outside because dining in new york is pretty expensive especially for dining you have to pay like the tax and tax in new york is crazy tax in new york is 8.8 percent again like i feel like it's much better to make food at home or like if you're a student and you have um uh what's it called like a meal plan it's much better to use your meal plan because you already paid for it you might as well use it you know if you get groceries in new york it's also not taxed like if i get groceries and i don't get food tax but if i eat out i do get tax for like service and stuff so fiscally it is much better to buy groceries and cook at home than to eat out but if you are going to eat out i highly suggest going out during the daytime like for lunch or like like early lunch like brunch or something oh rather than going in the nighttime for dinner because dinner prices doesn't matter where you are dinner prices just are more expensive naturally and also new york like new york nighttime is very prominent so they're gonna rack up prices during the nighttime because that's when more people go out and that's where they're gonna get their most money but yeah and in terms of like drinks i try not to like get drinks outside as much as possible so like for coffee i will typically drink like the cold brew at my dining hall or like make coffee at home because like starbucks in new york can go up to like six seven dollars and that's for like a grande like just like just a grande like coffee like nothing fancy but if you don't have the means to make coffee like at home like in your dorm or even just get it from school i would highly recommend going to this place called mato espresso over going to starbucks because if you order on the app for mato everything is two dollars fifty so you can get like a pastry for two dollars fifty and you can get like a coffee for two dollars fifty and the reason why Mato was even established was was to help students get coffee and food and just like breakfast for a much more affordable price. And they have a bunch of locations all over New York. Um, you just need to get the app and order on the app and everything you get will be $2.50. And then another really good app to get if your student is too good to go so too good to go is a app where vendors and restaurants they pack up all of the leftover food that they don't sell for the day and they mark it down really cheaply and they mark it down to like four or five dollars and they pack them into surprise bags and basically in the app you can reserve and pick up these surprise bags and you don't really know what they are like what's in it not only is it a really good way to save money on food but you also help reduce food waste because these vendors are, are able to you know still sell the food that they don't necessarily sell like in during their business hours and it's just really good for <laughs> both parties honestly it's like a win-win for everyone and my last point is to walk as much as possible so new york it's not very big like the city itself like i want to say like land wise so it's very easy to walk around and honestly in manhattan everything is so easy to navigate like the greater system makes it so easy to get around on foot and i love to walk everywhere i i've walked from like the lower east side to like times square before but obviously this isn't for everyone <laughs> like i know not everyone can walk 
a lot or they don't like to walk as much so if that's the case i would suggest that you take public transport instead but even then you have to keep in mind that public transport like for the subway it is 290 one-way trip so like if you were to go somewhere and come back it's almost six dollars for a round trip and that can be very worth it if you're going somewhere far like distance wise but if you're not really traveling a far distance i would highly recommend you just walk i never take an uber or taxi in new york because that's just way too expensive unless you like share rides sometimes that might be more worth it or affordable and again like if you're going somewhere far then obviously like to each their own you know but another thing that you have to keep in mind about public transport is that college students do not get discounts or at least for us in parsons we do not get college discounts and i think the only student discounts that the mta provides are is for like public schools like if you are in high school and below you get student you pay like a student fee instead of like regular price so that's just something to keep in mind when you are using the subway because you know if each trip is like six dollars that does rack up pretty fast and that's kind of why i like to walk as much as possible i hope this video was kind of helpful or like insightful to some of you guys i feel like it was pretty self-explanatory but i always think it's pretty interesting because a lot of people always be asking me like how expensive it is to live in new york and i'm not gonna give you an exact amount but it is a lot more expensive for me to be living in new york than it is for me to be living at home so i just thought it would be interesting or fun to share like all the little habits and tips that i do to save money as a student in new york because it's not easy anyways i hope you guys enjoy it and i will see you guys next time bye